<laughs> Anyways, let's, uh, we're going to continue our journey on what I call the road to recovery. And if you haven't been here for the service or you're listening online the first time, uh, the road to recovery is not just uh, for specific people. It's for all of us. And it's the whole design, I believe, 2022 is to bring those people back that have once been active in church and have fallen off uh, the wagon because of offense and other things or just life and to call them back into fellowship with God's people. And this morning we've, uh, we've used, or sorry, we've used the, the Lord's Prayer as uh, Pastor Blake had uh, the little uh, uh, example there. And we have went through hallowing God's name, feeding on the bread of life, who is Jesus, uh, to forgiving and dealing with offense, to uh, last week, how do we handle temptation, and how the evil one will tempt us to, to serve ourselves or serve him by serving ourselves, and how God will deliver that from us uh, as we travel down the road to recovery. But this morning, I'm going to travel down the final portion of the Lord's Prayer uh, on this series, on the road to recovery. And of course, the prayer uh, that I've taught is the Lord's Prayer, if you're familiar with that, out of Matthew 6. Again, it's in Luke as well. But uh, basically, it's hallowing God's name. And so the road to recovery uh, is not a dependent on your wealth, uh, poverty, education, position in life or a culture. It's not built by your human effort or perfectionism but it is a gift to everyone who places their trust in God. Now, so many times you can go to church and you'll hear a message like, I'm just a dirty, rotten sinner, uh, I was a drunk, I was this, I was that, and God came and rescued me. And we design the gospel, well, it's for those poor souls sitting on the street begging, uh, is what the gospel kind of gets boiled down to. But the gospel message uh, sometimes is more important to those in high standings because they think they don't need God and they don't need a recovery plan until all of a sudden in their lives something takes place uh, and begins to throw them off their plans and purposes. And so the road to recovery or the gospel message is for people in high position and it's people in low position because uh, God is no respecter of people. But... How many of you here today have called on the name of Jesus and then ended up uh, running into a very difficult trial? You heard a message, God will save you, life will be good, rose gardens, money, uh, everything's coming your way, and then boom, you get hit. Because life in this world, is a bro in a broken world, is full of what I call speed bumps. And when you become a Christian, your bumps sometimes get a little bigger because you're on the wrong team of the world. Because God's kingdom is not of this world. Even though He's in this world, we are not people of this world. Our destiny and our road to recovery does not end in this world. It ends in eternity with Christ Jesus. So as we travel along the road evil or brokenness who can come in the form of people or circumstances or natural disasters, uh, they present a speed bump for our life of faith. And so many people get knocked off their course because they run into a speed bump and they leave. And of course, these, they, these speed bumps are put up in roadblocks and the whole point is to cause you to leave your, the person of Christ and to begin to live your own life again. And of course, the devil, the evil one, as in the prayer says, he puts up temptation in front of us. Uh, the tempt to try to deliver ourselves, the temptation to uh, allow offense, to uh, cause us to stop walking down the road. And of course, God's plan is that we all continue to strive to know him through Jesus Christ, who is the, service of all, or the source of all life, He's, he, uh, he is the deliverer from temptation, fear, insecurity, and pride. Today we're now going to look over overcoming speed bumps along the road through the end of the traditional prayer that we see in the King James Version of Scripture. And I'll, a little, I'll talk a little bit about that. So Matthew 6, 
uh, says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And most of the times that's seen in the King James Version of Scripture or, or older translations of Scripture. And for anyone that may be reading a modern translation, whether it's the New Living Translation or the NIV or uh, just other ESV, um, amplif they're amplified, whatever that may be, that's an older one, but amplified. Uh, the translations uh, of this portion of Scripture actually appear in a footnote. And most of those translations will end, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then it footnotes, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now often this discrepancy, as many other discrepancy in Scripture, is used to dispute the authority and inspiration of Scripture. And I'm going to say, don't bite into that deception, uh, with which is plaguing the modern church and man. I'm actually quite, uh, this is just sort of a lie betrayal, but this is very important. When you're reading your scriptures, as long as it's a biblical-based translation and not one from a, an organization that's trying to manipulate it to fit their doctrine, um, the translations is very important that the Word of God that you read is important to understand that it is God's sovereign plan for human life it's not a choice it's not optional portions i'll like this but i don't like this it's either all or it's none and so don't bite into the narrative which i hear so much times in church i mean i expect it in the world but when church when people say oh, well uh, not all of what the bible is is true only portions of it but the problem with that is then none of it's true except for what you want it to make, you want to make it say. And so the reason this difference occurs in the Lord's Prayer and the King James Trans is the King James translators use later dated manuscripts, usually about 1000 AD, which were uh, contained the traditional ending. Then in 1946-1947, there was a discovery made in the Qumran caves, and they were called the Dead Sea Scrolls. And what they did is there's about, I'm not sure how many, but there's about 5,000 uh, translations that date back into the 300s from the original text of the eyewitnesses and what was written. And they found that the, those scrolls, many of them didn't contain that later portion that's in the King James. Uh, but to be real, this bears no relevance of the doctrine and the biblical story or history of the Bible. It's just probably an addition by uh, another translator to formalize the prayer's ending. That's it. Just like we would say in Jesus' name, Amen. That's just a formalized prayer. But you can be assured, because I've studied this out, not that I know everything, but I've studied this out, because I had to satisfy myself that the scriptures I read actually were evidential. And so I studied and, and read a lot of books on how the Bible was canonized so that I could get in my mind that what I read evidentially was accurate. And what I found out, there's more evidence on the compilation of Scripture, old and new, uh, in the historic evidence and the philosophical evidence than any other historic book in human history. So the biblical evidence is sound and accurate, but it still takes faith in that evidence to believe God has inspired Scripture. So that's just a little footnote on the road to recovery. Uh, the Scripture you read, God has inspired it, and he's translated it so we can have it, and it's our roadmap to traveling down the road of recovery. So today, as we continue the journey on this road by utilizing the traditional ending of King James, along with 1 Peter 1, verses 3 to 7, we're going to navigate speed, navigating through speed bumps in life. Now, I like to go out in the bush every fall and drive around logging roads and hunt. And so... A few years ago, I was driving down this logging road above Campbell Mountain, if you've ever been there. Uh, it's way up top. It's like a riverbed coming down. But anyways, I'm driving from the other end, and I end up coming down that riverbed. 
which Terry Lee loved. Um, but the point is, is here I am, I'm driving and I'm staring intently along the bush line and I'm looking for elk and deer. Not always just to shoot, but just to see the wildlife. Now, many of these roads have what they call deactivation ditches. How many have ever driven a logging road and experienced a deactivation ditch? Hallelujah. Um, Tara Lee, she bought a, anyways, that's a bunny trail, so I won't go there. I happen to break in all my vehicles, whether it's a van, a car, or a truck, in deactivation ditch. It's just something I do. Sometimes it's costly, I will tell you that. Anyways... Some of these activation ditches or deactivate are really, really deep. Right? Say that? Really, really deep. So as I was driving this one time and I was I was navigating, I went, I went, wow, that's a pretty deep ditch. But I thought, hey, what the heck? Let's go for it. So I went in and I come out the other side. I went, yeah, we did it. Anyways, I begin to look in the bush again looking for deer and animals and just... And what I didn't realize is they had the rascals put back-to-back really, really deep activation dates. So as I'm staring in the bush, all of a sudden I drop into this and my head bounces off the top of the, off the, top of the cab and I'm like going from side to side and I'm like, holy macaronis, uh, this is crazy. And that's why Tara Lee doesn't want to drive with me anymore up in the forestry roads. She says it's too bumpy. It's an adventure. It's funny. It was funny watching her. She's going, bong, 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 bong. it's like a full body workout. Anyways, I went through the ditch and once again began to stare and I hit. The truck jerked side bottomed out, and I slammed on the brakes, which is a normal response. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder how much this is going to cost me. Anyways, I got out, and uh, I took a look, and nothing wrong. Hallelujah. So I just kept driving. So I slowly drove up the other side, stopped, checked it for damage, and everything was good. You know, this is a great picture of our road to recovery as God's people, or as people seeking after God. You're cruising along life, and everything is good, and then boom, you hit a deactivation ditch or a speed bump. Today, more than ever, people face speed bumps with the fast-paced life, the cost of living, and cultural conflicts causing more and more stress, anxiety, and fear. How many of you here today would say that life is more stressful for you and causing more anxious or fear in your world. You're welcome to raise your hand. I don't think there's been a time where I've grown up, and I'm, I mean, I don't think I'm old, but I am old. I'm 56, but I do know what I see today has nothing to do with what it was when I was a child. There is more stress and fast pace and more divisiveness within culture than I've ever seen in my history. So those that are struggling with anxiety, fear, and stress, I just want to take a moment and say I affirm you. Uh, It's a normal human experience. You're not abnormal. It's all right. You can get through this, and you're not alone. I think the worst thing that we can do for people going through, and I do it all the time, unfortunately I do it to my wife more than anybody else, is I say, just quote a scripture. Just pray more. Do these things more. Well, that's the law. The best thing that we can do for people suffering anxiety, now they have to be proactive as well, is to just come alongside of them and not give them answers. Help them. And if you're married, you'll hear that as guys, we hear that all the time. We like to conquer and solve, uh, but that doesn't work uh, with ladies. They want a connection point. They want emotion. And uh, I fall short very many times on that. But that's how you help people that are going through anxiety. You don't quote Scripture. You don't tell them to get over it. You just move through. And we're all growing in that area. What I will say, though, is without trusting in Jesus, in my estimation, 
He is the only one that can help you and compensate as you go through the road of anxiety and fear. See, if you don't trust something outside of yourself, what will happen, or something greater than yourself, who Jesus is, your anxiety and fear will most likely propel you into self-effort and addiction, and that addiction could be work, money, sex, anger, depression, or religion. And these are all temporary solu solutions because they have no sustaining power. When I used to drink, I drank a little bit, and I would get drunk. But as I drank more, I needed more and more and more. And that's what sin does. Is at first it's fun, but as you get going down that road, it becomes less fun and brings death into your life because it's only temporal. But Jesus is the eternal Word of God. And he's gonna, He wants to walk with you down that road when you hit speed bumps. See, God has a better way. And it's not an easier way. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And it's not void of speed bumps, but a way where you can use, where He will use these speed bumps in our lives if we embrace them to refine us, to bless us, to build relationships, and to express His power and glory through us. See, the biggest question we face when seeking God or traveling the road of recovery with Jesus is will we embrace the trials of our lives as He sees them in order to go through them? Using another personal example of a trial of my life as I navigated uh, and hit a speed bump came while I was in business. As an employer, you have great responsibility. I know you do as an employee, but as an employer, you have great responsibility. You have employees, you have conflict resolutions, uh, anybody who's a manager would know this as well. You have debt obligations, competition, and customer service. And these all present us with a smorgasbord of trials or speed bumps. So the speed bump I hit was money. How many of you have ever hit the speed bump of money? <laughs> it's one of our greatest speed bumps. Anyways, I was in business and our company bank account was on its last legs and I had payroll to meet. Our company had been going through an extraordinary quiet time of business. It was a funeral home. What do you expect? Oh, I'm just kidding. Anyways, the cost of day-to-day -day operations had depleted the bank account over a three-month period because our business, and I know this is weird for people, had slowed down. Stress and anxiety ramped up more and more, and I began to be completely overwhelmed. Have you ever been there? Are you there now? When all of a sudden the bills are coming in, the bank account's short, or you're in overdraft, or you've, you've you maybe done some poor spending and you got lots of debt, and all of a sudden the, everything is ramping, and the stress and anxiety begin to ramp up more and more in your life. And that was happening to me. I became completely overwhelmed. And I'm a pretty laid-back personality. I put a lot inside. But I'm pretty easy going. I can get through most things. But money is one of my vices where I get overwhelmed when I don't have it, what I think will cover my expenses. During this time, I think I had a small glimpse of what Jesus went through when he sweat blood. I mean, it was a lot greater than I went through. But my face hurt. My mind hurt. I couldn't concentrate. I was sore, I was anxious, I was sleepless, and I was trying to figure this all out. Of course, I did the normal Christian thing. Uh, I checked for sin. I watched my confession. I claimed God's promises and kept on that smiley face, but nothing broke. Ever been there? I would wake up worried, have a hard time concentrating, Look at all the angles of business, discuss strategies, but still I was stressed right to the maximum. Have you ever bargained with God, prayed, read Scripture, applied all the know-hows, and only come up still consumed by your fear and anxiety? That could be you today. COVID has presented a unique set of anxieties and wars and all the turmoil in life. It's a speed bump. 
During this time, as I was navigating this speed bump, God changed my life, my message, my ministry, and my trust in Him. I'd like to say I found the magic pill for overcoming and not going over speed bumps, but truthfully, it was Matthew 6 principle, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I couldn't do it on my own. I had no magic pills. I had to go through and over the speed bump. And that's life. You can't avoid these speed bumps. They are there. It's the only where, only path on the road to travel. They're everywhere you go, but you can navigate through them. As I went through the stress and anxiety, I read Scripture. It's very important. Stayed in fellowship. Prayed. Called on God, but the transformation transformation came by a divine encounter as I was reading the scripture and he impressed it upon my heart where God revealed to me I was living in a heart of unbelief in his provision and his power I was exalting the speed bump but greater than him he took me down the road to recovery by reflecting on the nation of Israel's lack of entering into God's rest found is recorded in Hebrews 3 and Hebrew chapter 4, which is out of the old, it's an illustration of the Old Testament. He showed me the idolatry of my ministry, where I was going to do this stuff for God, and it was all about what I did for Him. And then He reminded me that my sole purpose as His child is to enjoy Him and worship Him through relationship. Because when I die, What I do in this life will be finished. But my worship and my relationship with God will continue on into eternity. What happened was my situation didn't immediately change, but my heart did. As I repented and said, God, I'm sorry, I need you and you will deliver me, I was filled with peace, calm, and rest. Over time, we did meet our payroll. Weird thinking about funeral business, but we picked up. We picked up, and there was no pun intended there. (laughs) So, what happened? How did that all happen? How do we navigate? How do we go from a stress and anxious life of fear to all of a sudden peace when the circumstances stay the same? To the natural mind, to navigate a speed bump and to look peaceful in the most negative situations is incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. But we serve, and I proclaim, a God of transformation that is supernatural. He's above this, this world. He's the God of creation. And anything that we face in this life has to be subjected to Him. As 1 Corinthians uh, one says, and why it's incomprehensible to the natural man is because we don't believe it. It doesn't understand God. But it says this, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to be nullified by the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. So let's look at how to experience, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the principles needed and to be applied when we navigate through speed bumps of life on the road to recovery. And we're going to turn now to 1 Peter, well not turn, but we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus from the dead, now we live with great expectation. This is of the NLT translation. And we have a priceless inheritance, don't miss this, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you. Who's protecting you? God is protecting you by His power until you receive the salvation 
which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad, or count all joy, there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials from, for a while, a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith, is far more though your faith is far more precious than gold mere gold so when you faith your faith remains strong through many trials it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the end results of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I've got three principles out of here in navigating the speed bumps of life on your road to recovery. The first principle is trust. Knowing life will present speed bumps, your attitude of overcoming must be one of trust, regardless of the intensity of the trial. You have to believe God will deliver you and you have to allow Him to trust or allow yourself to trust Him regardless of what it looks like. The road to recovery is not simply a survival mindset. You're not just going to survive, you're going to prosper in that speed bump trial. But you have to have a victorious mindset, mindset which is done by focus. Verse 3 says it is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus from the dead, now we live with great expectation. The biggest cause of anxiety is the lack of expectation. If you're not expecting God to deliver you, or that your life is just always going to be broken, you will never experience thy kingdom power in your life because you are not believing God at His Word. Going through speed bumps is inevitable. All of us will go for them, through them. Overcome will take expectation of God to bring us about good, regardless of the situation. It takes trust. Do you believe God is good? If you believe He's evil, you won't gain any goodness from God. In my example, though I confess trust, the fear... And anxiety revealed otherwise. When you go through fear and anxiety and trust, what it's revealing in you is that your trust in God hasn't yet been formed in that area. There's no condemnation. It's just God is trying to make you realize He's your source. My trust came when I had nowhere else to turn but God. In fact, I had to die to myself. God led me through Scripture and revealed to me I was living like God's people called Israel in Hebrews 3 and 4, and how that first generation uh, coming from slavery never entered the rest or promise of God except for their children and Joshua and Caleb who expected God to deliver them. The rest all died in the desert. Even after seeing God's supernatural delivery. Think about that. Here's God... He brings them out of Egypt, through a Red Sea, destroys the army, feeds them water from a rock, sh showers bread on them called manna, and they still said, oh, we can't get into the promised land. Why? Because we don't believe God can deliver us into that land. And that's how sometimes our attitude is when we face a speed bump. And we, must have to, we need to change that. It wasn't until I finally realized that I was living on the dangerous line of unbelief. Even at, or causing me, all what it did was it caused me to repent and say, God, I'm sorry for not trusting you. And to do as the man whose son was trying to be, or they were trying to heal his son, but it wasn't working. And Jesus comes and heals his son. He says, just believe. He sa and the guy cries out in Mark 9, if you can, Jesus says, everything is impossible for one who believes, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I believe, help me overcome my unbelief. It's not wrong to doubt. 
You don't have to always have a positive confession. What you have to always do is call out on the name of Jesus. And say, Father, I don't like this. I don't like what I'm going through. I don't like this. But I will trust Your Word and You above my circumstance. Above my speed bump. If you are not willing to do that, you will never be able to navigate in power through them. See, trust only comes by overcoming. And overcoming only comes through the surrender of our wills to God. And then pours his king, where He pours His kingdom power of expectation through the Holy Spirit in order to break the grip of anxiety and give us freedom. Where are you on your road to recovery? Have you hit a speed bump of sickness, finance, relationship, depression, or purpose? Maybe it's COVID. Maybe it's the war in Ukraine. Maybe it's just life. Maybe it's God right now is revealing to you a path of trust and expectation as you travel through that speed bump. Remember, 1 Peter 1 says, and we have a priceless inheritance an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure, undefiled, beyond the reach of the change and decay, and through faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive the salvation, which is ready to be revealed on this last day for all to see. God has got your back. And He didn't promise you get everything in this life. But he did promise that he has an inheritance waiting for you when life ends and you go on to real life. The second part of navigating is you trust, but the second part is trials. <laughs> I hated trials. I hated the verse, count it all joy when you face trials. What a stupid verse. Until I realized what, he was say what Peter was saying. Wouldn't it be nice to simply apply the right formula of confession and good works and receive the reward of trust, reward of trust, peace, and tranquility without trials? Wouldn't that be fun? Hallelujah. But it ain't going to happen in this world. Sorry, that's not good English, but that's you got me. Well, this is not the roadway to trust. Spiritual and emotional wholeness always take trials. So how do you know what you're trusting in unless you face a trial? Because faith without trials has to, or has to be tested, otherwise it's shallow faith. Trials refine and reveal what our trust is truly in. First Peter, uh, verse 6, he says, So be truly glad. <laughs> there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests pure and purifies gold, though, for, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials. Like a tree in nature, to be strong and grow plentiful, it has to have the seasons of, of, uh, of winter, spring, summer, and fall in order to gain its strength and beauty. Otherwise, it just blows up or blows over in the first windstorm. So it is with faith uh, that brings about trust and expectation. Speed bumps on the road to recovery empower our faith to build spiritual and emotional wholeness, but only if we do as Peter says, count it all joy. As I said earlier, I didn't like this verse. I hated this verse. Count it all joy. What a stupid thought until I realized how trials increased my trust and built confidence in God's problems, promises. That's actually what the financial thing did for me. It actually gave me more trust so that when I go through it, I trust God now. Still squeak a lot, but I still trust God more than I did before. When I had a heart attack, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Am I ready to meet my Maker? And I was overwhelmed by the anxiousness I had in that thought. But now I can face that with more trust. Because trials help refine and purify your faith motives. 
It also reminds me in trials, the world that we live is not the final destination on your road to recovery. It is the new earth and heavens God will bring when he removes all brokenness, death, sickness, and sin. Trials are God's solution to purify your faith, to get your focus on him and on your final stop on the road to recovery, the reward. Are you counting it all joy when you face your difficulties? God's method for building trust, strength, and expectation always involve trials in this life. Speed bumps. The final portion is if we had to sit with trust and trials, we would probably give up, but we have a triumphant God. And so the third portion is triumph. We triumph in this life and the life to come. The road to recovery leads us to triumph not only in this life, but more importantly, the next life. Peter says these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will do what? It will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Tim Keller, the preacher out of Our Redeemer Presbyterian New York, said in one of his sermons as I was listening, for years he said, I read this thinking that uh, we would enter into heaven praising God, and that's what he was saying. But he realized that God was actually praising those that entered into heaven trusting in him through many trials. What a great revelation that that is so true. And it's scripturally sound. What a great revelation that certainly we will praise Jesus when we enter into heaven as a song I can only imagine, will I dance or will I fall? But more importantly, think of someone running an Ironman race. As they approach the finish line, what happens? Does everybody say, oh, praise us. Praise us. No, the crowd cheers the runner on. You can do it. You can get through this. And they cheer them as they cross the finish line. They land in the arms of a waiting person to take them to the tent to recover. But the point is, is their praise, you did it. Well done. Great. Once they cross the line, they collapse into the arms of the people and wait. Hebrews 12 says this about people that put their trust in God. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. We have Jesus waiting for us. Do you know that, people? God is waiting for you to finish your race. Not quit, but to finish. He's cheering you along, along with all the great cloud of witnesses of God's people that went before us. They're cheering us in heaven, saying you can do it, you can make it, and God is waiting for you to cross the finish line on your road to recovery. And when we do, we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your Father's rest. You may be facing fear and anxiety right now, but look at the triumph that you have waiting for you. Think of the crowd in heaven cheering you on. Thinking the Father in heaven waiting for you to come and be restored completely. Just take a moment. Let's just take a moment in this service. And let's reflect on this truth. Just close your eyes and visualize entering into the presence of God, whether it's in death right now or whether when Christ comes, that you enter into heaven and see Jesus face to face. The one that you've been serving without seeing. You will see Jesus, the one you have served, battling the speed bump of life, all of a sudden you'll see Him face to face. You will collapse into His arms. There will be more, no, no more stress, fear, sickness, turmoil, depression, 
anxiety or death, just peace. You have triumphed, will be the word. What a day that will be. There's an old song, what a day will that be when my Jesus I shall see. Are you living in expectation of that day? Or are you allowing the speed bumps of this life to take you off course, to stall you into a ditch? Peter says it like this, though you have not seen Him, you love Him, and even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with what? Inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your, your souls. Knowing one day we will triumph, we should look forward even in the midst of a speed bump. It will break the power of fear and anxiety. So this morning, as we end, my question is, where's your focus? Are you overwhelmed with anxiousness and fear and stress, no matter what your position in life, whether it's inner or outward? Where's your focus? See, God doesn't want you to hit a speed bump and stop or go off the road. He wants you to go through those speed bumps so that you will triumph in the life to come. The road to recovery when navigating speed bumps is built on these three principles. You have to trust God that He's good. You have to embrace trials as part of your life. And then you have to look ahead to triumph, not only in this life, but more importantly, in the life to come. Are you in a speed bump ditch right now? All I can say, call out to Jesus. Trust in His ability to bring good out of the trials you are currently in. Know these speed bumps are designed for blessing, not for cursing. They will strengthen your character, your trust, and your faith like fire tempering steel so it can get a sharp edge. Keep your focus on the reward waiting in the life to come. This is how you will triumph in life. Call on Jesus right now. He's waiting for you, and He's waiting at the finish line of your life. The choice is whether you want to believe Him by trusting to go through the trials and allow Him to deliver you, and then have a triumphant reward. Well done, good and faithful servant. I'm just going to share one little thing about going through a speed bump. There's no formula. I called on God's name. I read my Scripture. I confessed my sins. I called out more. And that was over about a month period. And finally one day, the Holy Spirit hit me in the heart and says, you're living in unbelief. You need to repent. You need to call and trust Me. You need to realize that your life in this world is full of good works. It's going to be full of bumps and bruises and all different things. But your number one call is to worship Me. I don't care if you go to church, give money, feed the poor, or whatever, preach the Gospel. What I care is a relationship with you. Those other things will be a byproduct of that relationship. Because Jesus has paid and he smoothed out the speed bump called uh, hell, he's taken away if you're willing to allow him to be your Lord. Church, that's the message. It's not sin and morality. The message is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Morality is a byproduct of that relationship. Good works are a byproduct of that relationship. But they can become speed bumps when we get our eyes off Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus right now and you're suffering with, with anxiety and fear, call on Him. He's alive and well. He's at the right hand of the Father. 
He's, and says that He's making prayer and intercession for you. But He wants a relationship with you. He's the only one that can help you navigate through speed bumps and to experience the road to recovery. And if you're a Christian and you've called on His name and you've allowed a speed bump to put you on the ditch or to put you on the side, you need to repent. In other words, change your thinking and get your eyes back on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down. He's waiting for you to get re-engaged in the game He's waiting for you to worship Him and quit allowing the bumps of this life, the fears and anxiety to to throw you off course. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You may hit speed bumps, but God does not condemn you. He says, trust me, and I will deliver you. Let's pray. Father in Heaven, we just thank You for Your goodness. I thank You, Lord Jesus, that You paid the price on Calvary. We're going to celebrate that in two, two weeks. It's kind of weird. We celebrate your death, your beating, and then we, your resurrection. But Father, that's what you, that was what you did. You poured all of the, the wrath and judgment of sin upon your son Jesus. And Jesus, you removed that by being resurrected, showing that your payment was done. It was finished. I thank You, Holy Spirit, that You were sent back to take all that Jesus had from the Father and give it to us. I pray right now that people that are listening this morning online or in this service would call out on You, Lord Jesus, and allow You to put their trust in You, even in a trial, that they would have a triumphant life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday. I want to just say as well with uh, Carla, we had a... Uh, what do you call that? A gathering last Sunday.